Welcome to this episode of Keep Creating. In today's episode, we're going to be exploring Stampscape Scenery Stamps. Stampscape Scenery Stamps are red rubber stamps on a wood block, and we have a number of different types and styles here at the store. We have also some little accent pieces and also ones on claim. Today, we're going to be showing you how to brayer and how to color on glossy paper using these beautiful scenery stamps. In class today, we're going to be making this one. So today we're going to be talking about some stampscapes and I have some beautiful designs for you. We have some Z-fold cards here and this one has a nice cabin in the woods. This one here is another mountainous scene, probably more of a fall type. We have all of the different types of stampscapes as well as the ones that the company sends us. Isn't this beautiful? It's just a nice, beautiful scene for winter or even any time of year, really. Um, there's no, uh, no, no snow in that particular one. Then I also have another snow scene. This one's nice and glittery. So this one here I made myself and it's just a nice cabin in the woods. We have a lighthouse one that is just a basic lighthouse on the beach. A couple of other samples from the company. There's a nice big one so you can see some inspiration. And then we also have some others. You can actually make them onto tags, why not? A nice uh, man card or something for the holidays to a man or to someone that just likes the scenery. If you are looking for some snowy peaks and a nice little tag. Then we also have this really pretty one. This is the one that we're going to make today. And this is um, a cabin in the woods with a nice lake scene. And this is gonna be used with dye inks and some briering. And then the last one that I'm just gonna show you is another lighthouse scene. This is another Z-fold card. You can see it's called Z-fold because of the way that all of the pieces move. And then you're going to see that there is not only the lighthouse, but a little bit of a sunset or sunrise in the background and um, some nice, beautiful ocean. So the one we're gonna get started with today is going to be this particular one and it is brayered on. So I'm, we're just going to do one panel for now so you can see how that works. So I have here a glossy piece of cardstock. It's just um, glossy on one side and matte on the other. So we only want to work on the glossy side. Place that right down onto our workstation. We are going to need a brayer. This is what a brayer looks like. Um, usually they're not quite as messy, but I do love my brayer. So it has a lot of different colors of inks and paints on it. As long as it's nice and smooth, you're good to go. If it's not nice and smooth, you should actually wash it in some nice warm water. And uh, you can kind of pick off any pieces that you might have. So sometimes it picks up glitter or, or uh, maybe just the paint has stayed on there too long. You should never Put your brayer down like this when you store it. You should always store it either hanging or you should store it so that the roller is face up. That way you don't get a nice smooth uh, line right there where it's resting on. And when you go to brayer, it always rolls on nice and smooth. Some of the inks that we're going to use today are just a dye based ink. We have a couple of different colors here. I'm going to start first of all with this particular project with the shell pink and this is an Adirondack color. To use the brayer, I'm going to take my brayer and I'm just going to roll it, continue to roll it just like this onto the ink pad. I don't want to roll back and forth because I'm only going to get one area of the brayer. We're going to just continue to roll this just a little bit at a time until I think that it's nice and juicy and inked up. Now I know you can't see it at home, but I can see that it's got quite a bit of ink on there already. I'm going to hold my glossy piece just at a little bit of an angle, and I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to just roll that right on. You can see how the color has just attached itself right onto the white piece of paper here. This is a pink, so it's a nice subtle color. So I'm going to go down about halfway. If you feel like you need more, just ink it up again, and then just go ahead and lay that on. The more that you ink up and the more you put down, even in layers, is the darker it's going to get. 
So I have this about halfway, and this is a nice pink color, like I said, shell pink. And now I'm going to go with a nice bright purple twilight. And again, for this particular one, I'm going to lay on the color. You can see I'm only really using part of the brayer for this, and I am just going to roll this. Now again, you should never roll back and forth. If you do, sometimes you'll get like a line where the, the brayer maybe is, has a little imperfection. By rolling it on like this, you can actually blend the color in, and you can have that color um, all nice and even. So you can see how I've done that. Now this particular white piece of paper must have had some dust on it, and you can see that in a moment. It uh, actually is going to make a perfect sky for me with those dust particles. You can see how that is. I don't know if you can see that. And that's just mixing the two colors together. One thing to note about this um, glossy cardstock is that if you have oily or greasy fingers from maybe some lotion or things like that, you shouldn't be touching the glossy part of the paper because it does have a tendency to leave a fingerprint. Um, just so you can see some of the little bits of maybe dust or maybe that was just something that was on the brayer to begin with. So I have the darkest color here, which is now eggplant. And I'm going to start at the top, but I'm just going to move it down. And I don't want a ton of it. I just want it to be, you can see how nice and dark that is. I just want it to kind of mix right in. You don't want it to be a night scene. I just want it to be maybe a twilight type scene. And I have just mixed that color right in, just like that. Isn't that beautiful? So now I have to do the bottom part. Now the bottom for me, I already know, is going to be, I'm just going to clean off my brayer just a teeny bit here. For the bottom for me, I already know, is going to be uh, a lake. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to use my blues. Now I didn't use a ton of colors. I'm actually just cleaning off that brayer. You can see it's just really nice and easy here. I have two different kind of blues that I'm going to use. First I'm going to use is a sailboat blue. It's a nice bright color. And we're going to just go ahead and ink that up again. And again, there's no need to ink up the whole thing just a little bit. It'll go a long way. I have just a little bit inked up. Now I do want to go all the way up to that pink line that I have done. So you can go ahead and start that and then move it down. Again, I'm just rolling that. Now, where that line is of the blue, that's going to be her, your horizon line, if that helps you uh, determine. Now, if you're not sure if you're going straight, you should maybe just take a step back and see if it's uh, straight across. I'm not sure from this angle, but if it's not straight across, you might need to tape your piece down so you can you make sure that it is straight across. Just going to add a little bit more blue at the bottom here. I did still have a teeny bit of purple on my brayer, so a little bit of purple came out at the bottom, which is actually not a problem for this particular design. And my last color I'm going to add on here for now is the denim. This is a nice dark blue. I'm going to start at the bottom and then just move that right up. You can see how nice and easy this is. And now you would not get this same look with regular cardstock. You do need to have a nice uh, glossy cardstock. A chrome coat will work nice. Something glossy. If you don't have it glossy, it's not going to look the same. It just doesn't blend as nicely. I actually have a sample here of a card that I did. Here it is right here. I card that I did on a non-glossy surface and you can see it's just not as bright and vibrant as some of the other samples that I showed you. The colors just soak into the paper a little bit different. The colors just look a little bit different. Not that the card has any problems or not that it's not a nice card. It just has a nice, it has a different look to it. And this particular one, which, which is the brayering, it's not going to move and it's not going to flow in color like these ones have. One thing to note about the inks that we're using today is that even though you might make them as dark as they are, over time they'll fade a little bit too. These colors here are probably the same colors that I used in this one. So you can see the difference in the colors there. It just faded over time. 
So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start stamping. Now one of the stamps that I'm going to be using today is going to be this um, cabin in the woods. I think it's called, oh, cabin with a fence. Now these are all red rubber stamps. I never clean my stamps, so they do look kind of filthy, <laughs> but they always stamp perfectly every time. I have no problems. Because it's a glossy surface, I want to use a solvent-based ink. So the ink that I'm going to use today is Archival Ink Jet Black by Ranger. There's a couple of different solvent-based inks out there, but this is the one that I seem to like to use when I'm doing my stampscapes. I always leave my uh, ink, my stamp, wood side down with my rubber face up when I stamp these for the stampscapes, and I go ahead and I add a lot of different color on. One thing to note, and I always tell people in class, is that if you have more than one of these kind of ink pads, you should do your entire scene in the one color. There's all different shades of gray and black, and so you want to make sure that you only use the same one, that way you get the same color. Now you don't need to press down really hard, I've inked that up quite a bit here, and I'm actually going to place this so that it's off the page just a little bit because I want to add a different stamp to show you how to do that. So I place that right down. Where it is on the design is where it is on the back, which is nice. Not every ink pad does, or not every stamp does that. You do have to play around with it. But uh, Stampscapes is pretty good about it. So I'm just going to press down pretty well there, lift up, and you're going to see I'm going to have a nice lake here, a nice little house. And my house is a little bit in the lake, but we can fix that too. So then I'm also going to add another stamp with that. And this particular stamp is called the Lakeside Cove. And again, I need to ink that up. So I'm going to place that wood side down with the rubber up. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink that with my ink pad, the same ink pad that I used, which is the Jet Black. Let's go ahead and stamp that. And now I'm going to place that right I want to make sure this one actually has a little bit of a lake in it, so I want to have it a little bit further down than the last one. So I'm going to line that right up just like that and get that so that hopefully it goes right inside of my lake. There we go. Give it a nice decent press. Make sure you get the whole design out there. And you can see it's off the page here. There's nothing wrong with that. It's because of how I want the placement of the stamp. So sometimes the stamp goes off the page. That's why you should always have something underneath you to protect your work surface. So I have this image here that I have gone ahead and I have stamped that. So I've cut it off just a teeny bit, but we can fix that too. Now when you're doing things like this, you can actually add some accents. I have here some um, water pattern, which is just a little bit of what looks like maybe like some lake water. I'm going to ink that right up, and I'm going to actually stamp it off onto my mat here and then go ahead on. The reason why I do that is so that it has a double stamp, so it doesn't look as dark. I don't really want it super dark. I just want it to have a little bit of a pattern on there. You can see that here. If I had stamped directly on there, it would be a little bit darker, so I stamped off first. That's what they call second generation stamping. And this particular one really needs that when you're doing something that you don't want it to be a focal point. Now, I also have some clouds. These are the cumulus clouds for the background. Maybe, uh, maybe I wouldn't have normally chosen it that with this particular background, it looks really pretty. We're just going to add maybe one or two right on here so you can see what it looks like. And I'm going to stamp that off as well. And I'm just going to add that right to the sky there. I'm going to add that one more time. And you can see that's really nice and subtle there. If I had gone directly on it, it would be really dark, but here I've added it and it's just a nice subtle look to it. Now whenever I do a stampscape scene, I do always end it off with something really dark. So I have here um, some cattails, I believe, uh, rocks and reeds. I'm only going to be using part of this particular stamp. 
and I'm just going to be inking up. Now normally I would ink it up with the piece of wood down and then like this, but here I only want the top part of this. So I'm just going to ink that just like that, just a little bit. And now I'm not going to stamp off, but I'm going to stamp right on top of it. And I'm going to stamp and I'm going to actually press a little bit harder than I normally do because I really want them to stick out. I'm going to show you what that looks like first before I finish it off. You can see how really dark that is. That's because it's in the foreground, so that would be the thing that you would see if you were looking at this in the distance. So I'm going to finish that off. I'm just going to do another one over here. I'm going to press down really hard again. Now if I did the whole thing, it might look kind of silly, but here what I have is I've just done a little bit of those reeds right there. Now the top might look a little empty to you, so I'm actually going to use something unique. This one here is another one of the Stampscape stamps, and this is the oak tree but I'm only going to use part of the oak tree. I'm not going to use the whole thing. In this case, it is kind of big and I know I want to use this particular part. So I'm just going to ink that right up over here. I'm just going to give it nice black here so that it's nice on there. Now don't go too deep when you're doing this because if you do, you'll get part of the actual stump or the actual part of the tree. You only really want the branches. I'm going to place that again. We're going to push this really hard, just trying to get a little bit of the branch look here. Ink that right up again. I'm going to go ahead in, not too deep into the design because we don't want it to look, we just want it to have that look like there's a little branch hoeing and down. We don't want the whole tree in there. So you can see that this is a finished Stampscapes brayered card. Now you could go ahead in with some paint and you could squeeze out a little bit of paint onto uh, a little bit of an acrylic block or your mat here. I have a little bit and I have some water here that I have. I'm just going to spray that. Take a paintbrush. This has got some stiff bristles on it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to touch that up just like this. I just want it to be kind of wet on there. And then you could take this here and you could add a little bit of snow to your piece just by flicking nicely. Just like that. And you can see, I don't know if you can pick that up in the camera. Let's see, let me see what they say. Can you see the little bits of snow that I've added? Just a little bit. There's also a couple of other tricks that you could do if you wanted. They also make um, a snow rider, something very similar to this. And you could actually go ahead and you could squeeze out. Let's see if this gets started. You could squeeze out a little bit of snow here, fix your little mistake, and have it really snowy. So we'll add that snow right up to the line there. Add a little bit of snow right onto some of those rocks right in there. Right like that. And maybe a little bit of snow in the trees. Just a, oop, that's a little blob. We'll just clean that up just a little bit there. And you can see a little bit right maybe along the roof. Yeah, and you can see how you have cleaned that right up. If you wanted, you could actually add a little bit of glitter onto it too to have that glitter kind of nice sparkly here. I don't know if I have any glitter at the moment. Yep, here it is. Place that right on top. And you've actually gone ahead and you have just made this just a little bit more detailed than it was before. Let's tap that glitter off. And when the Snow Rider dries, you can actually take just like a little Swiffer pad and you can clean that up and the, the glitter that's on the house there will actually clean right up. I know glitter is kind of hard to see, so I'm hoping that you guys can see that. So that's just a one way to use the Stampscapes. I have another way that I'm going to show you in just a moment. This time I'm going to show you a different way to use the Stampscape stamps. So for this one here, I'm again using a piece of glossy paper and I'm going to actually use the stamps direct to paper rather than brayer on any color first. 
we'll add the color on later. So this one I'm going to use a different stamp, the Lakeside Cabin. Again, wood side face down, going to ink up this stamp nice and juicy like. And this time I'm going to use the paper horizontally. I'm going to place this stamp right on down. And again, I always like to have my stamps kind of go off the page if they can the first time. Just adds added interest because it goes off the page. So it's kind of like it's a real scene. Ooh, who's out there? And you get to look. So we've added that right on there. Now we're going to add on a different stamp. Why not? I'm going to just go ahead and ink that right up again. This one was inked up previously, so it's got a little bit of juice left on it. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to match that up as best we can and then go ahead and place that down. Again, this one goes right off the page as well. So I'm going to ink that and stamp that right there. Oop, I, not as easy, not as done, but you know what? If you have a problem where it's a little bit lighter in one area, what you can do is you can go over it with a multi-liner pen or a zig photo writer, something like that to make it a little bit darker. There's never any problem with that. So now what we're going to do now that we've done the stamping part of it is we're actually going to do the coloring part on top of this. The first thing that you do need to do is just take a paper towel real quick, place it right on top, and just kind of give it a little rub. Just because the ink might have left some like extra little spots, you can see how much ink is still left on that paper towel. We're actually going to go ahead and do that again just to make sure that any ink is up. If there's no ink on it, or if the ink is left on it, what will happen is when we go to do the next step, you're actually going to end up with a little bit of um, smearing. So we don't want that to happen. So I'm just looking for my pieces here. So I've got my purple and my blue. So I'll start with the purple since I have that one. And here I have just a little tool. Um, this one is, uh, has, holds an ink dauber piece here, and we're actually going to color with it just the way it is. So we're going to add just a little bit of pink on here, and we're going to go ahead and add that color with just like little round strokes, and we're just going to add that right on. So there's my pink added right on. We're going to go ahead with the purple. Tap that right on with the little ink dauber, little one. And I always start off the page and I go onto the page. And again, I'm just doing some round circles and I'm going to layer that color right on top. Now I'm going to stick with the same color scheme as I did the last one, just so you can see the difference between the brayering and the adding of the ink after. And the last one, of course, is going to be this eggplant again. And I'm just dabbing that on. I'm going to start top. Now this is going to have a little bit of a different color to it because it doesn't lay on as much ink. So you can see here, just going to add it a little bit more because it didn't mix. Now if your colors, you can see how I have done that so far. If your colors need a little bit more blending, you can certainly go backwards and you can add even the lighter color on top of the darker color and kind of move that color too. So now I'm going to do the bottom part. I'm going to take that right off. It rips right off. It's just a Velcro. And I'm going to place the uh, new one right on top. And I'm starting with that sailboat blue that I used before, previous, giving a nice little roll on there so that it's nice and blue. And I'm going to start right off the page and I'm going to get right in. Now, I'm leaving the rocks on purpose because I'm going to show you something really cool with them once we're done here. I'm just adding that right on just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and add in that last color, which is going to be the denim. So I'm going to add the denim right on there. Now, if it's kind of smeary, you can go ahead and you can kind of tap it off a little bit. Sometimes they get kind of smeary. You can add some texture by just kind of pouncing the tool a little bit too. And just go ahead and add that in there. So I have that. So here is the base of it. Now just very similar to what we did before, but this time we did not brayer. This time we colored with the ink dauber. Now you can actually go in and you can color some of this with some markers. So I have a marker here called pumice stone and we're going to just mark oh, the wrong end. We're going to just take the brush tip end and we're going to go ahead and we're going to color in these rocks simply with the marker. And this is just right on top of the glossy paper. 
Normally I would tell you that a glossy paper would not hold the ink very well, but in this case it actually holds it very well. I would say though that if you wanted it to remain as bright as it was when you first finished it, you should probably um, put a sealant on top of these or store them in a dark um, area so that you don't have any kind of um, lightening. It lightens automatically. In classes it's usually not a bad thing at all because we usually have people that are really heavy handed with their inking and so don't even worry about that because after over time it's actually going to go ahead and make that a little bit lighter. So I'm actually taking the color and I'm smearing it a little bit with my finger. I don't know if you can see that happening here. I'm going adding it and I can only do this because of the fact that it has a glossy paper underneath it. If this was not glossy paper you would not be able to smear it like I am now. I'm just using my finger and I'm just going to have a little bit of some trees done here. Of course I would, could be, you could be really probably much more delicate with it than I'm doing here. And go ahead and you can color in your house. You can color in, um, I always like to, whenever I'm doing a night scene like this one, I always like to color the house with uh, yellow lights inside so it looks like there's actually somebody home, especially since they're in the woods all alone. You don't want the bears to come and visit them. <laughs> so we have a little bit of, um, this is I think wild honey and we color in the windows so that it looks like there's somebody home in there. And you can color in, of course, the house itself with any kind of color. I have a brown here and we'll do the roof. Now you could still go ahead after you're done with that you could still go ahead and you could um, take the white paint and you could water that down just a little bit there and you can go ahead and flick on the snowfall just like we did before. So you can see that this is nice little snowfall. You could actually, if you wanted, you could make a lot more. There we go. You could still go in with the Snow Rider, which I put over here, and you could add some snow right to the roof. Make it a little bit more dimensional. You could even go ahead and add a little bit of snow right to the ground there as well. Maybe not quite so much in the air. And then we have uh, just a little bit of glitter like we did before, just added right on top of that. So I'll just put that right here. So you can see that we have completed two Stampscapes cards and they're just different techniques, same stamps or same type of stamps in both cases, and same colors, but they have different results. So I hope that you have enjoyed how we have done this one today, both of these. We have plenty of samples here in the store and we always have somebody that can help you too if you ever want to know how to do more different types of stampscapes or more scenes at all. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Keep Creating. These are our finished Stampscapes images that we've made today. I hope that you have enjoyed these Stampscapes and that you might want to try them yourself someday. If you would like to send in your comments or if you have a suggestion for a new episode of Keep Creating, we'd love to hear it. You can email us at keptcreations at gmail.com. Until then, keep creating.